Hi, my name is Dave. Today I'm going to talk to you about collimating your Newtonian telescope. This is for beginners. More advanced users, you probably already know a whole lot more than what I'm about to tell people. If you just bought uh, an inexpensive Newtonian telescope like this, you want to know how to adjust it? Stay tuned. First thing is, you really shouldn't start with any tools whatsoever. People will try and sell you all sorts of fancy devices and things to help you do this. The first thing I want you to do is not use any tools at all. After you get used to using your naked eye to collimate, then you can start using some of these fancy tools. Let me show you what naked eye collimation looks like. My first piece of advice to you is this. Don't do it. If you look down the focuser of your telescope and you see an image that looks like this, where the diamond represents your eye, then you've got a telescope that's in pretty good collimation. And you probably shouldn't even mess with it. There's no need to. You're getting a good image. Leave it alone. Do no harm, as the doctor says. This is the Orion Star Blast, very highly regarded beginner telescope. You see the mirror down there. It has a little dot on it. Okay, you can see the mirror down there at the back. And if we are clever, we can see the mirror clips. There are three mirror clips. It's got four veins right here. Those are holding the, that's the spider that's holding the secondary mirror. But it's also got three clips at the very back there that you can see. Plus the dot. On the back of your telescope, you will find probably three sets of screws. Um, these are matching, and they're uh, sometimes push-pull. More often, at least with beginner scopes, this one is the one that does the adjustment. It's got it spring-loaded. So when you turn that, it's pushing the mirror on this particular end of the triangle in and out. This thing just locks it down. After you're done making the adjustments, you just lock this down. These three screws or bolts or whatever they might be will push and pull and rearrange the mirror to line up the image so it comes straight through your eye. If you follow my methodology, these are the only, these six here are the only ones that you will adjust. You will never mess with these front four. There's three or four. Don't ever touch those. Those are your secondary adjustment that can really get you messed up. Probably you won't ever need to. In most beginner scopes, these are well made enough that you will probably never need to touch those. If you do need to mess with those, then you're going to need further instruction. You're going to need to do some homework. This is an ordinary pencil. Take the rubberized end and poke it through here. See how the t pencil is poking all the way through there? If your pencil won't do that, then you have a lens in here. And you can't do, you can't use the techniques I'm about to describe. You have what's called a Jones Bird Telescope. It's actually uh, not a true Newtonian. It's a modified Newtonian. You can't use these techniques. Sorry. You really don't have to have any kind of a device to do at least a rough collimation. Let me show you. I'm going to use this camera, my old camera, that I've got a little diamond shape cut out to represent my human eye. So that'll show you what it looks like when you do an approximate collimation. Okay, we're just going to look right through the focuser tube. What you're seeing now is the diamond shape is supposed to represent your eye. And in the middle of your eye, it's smack dab right on, it's pretty well collimated, is the center dot, the collimation dot on the primary mirror. Around the outside you'll see three mirror clips. You see this thing over here, that thing is the focuser, that's uh, projecting into the visual stream. The main thing is you can see the three mirror clips and you can see the center dot and you can see your eye. So this tells you that we're pretty well collimated. Okay, now I'm going to tweak one of these and you'll see what's happening in the eyepiece. That's changing this bolt here. If I go down and change a different bolt, it has a different kind of an effect, see? And if I go over here, it's yet a third effect. It 
So what you do is, by tr trial and error, just move this around till you get things lined up straight again. Till we got it collimated. Everything's lined up perfectly. One of the tricky things about this is keeping your eye centered. It's almost impossible, as you can see, one of the mirror clips is now slightly out of view. So I'm, sl I'm slightly out of collimation. Let's, let's fix that if I can. The problem is that jiggling it and stuff. All right. That's better. It will now be a very good view. This is pretty much perfect collimation. But you can be more certain of this if you use a tool. Now I've got a centering device in the tube. Let's see what we can see here. You can see it's pretty much the same view we had before, but an important difference. Now the eye has been replaced with the uh, centering device. Let me enlarge it a little bit. All right, you can see me now changing things. That's one of them. Let's try another screw. Let's see it goes in a different direction. It's exactly the same game as with your eye. Just trying to get things centered. That's all you're doing. There are all kinds of collimation devices on the market. Um, and there is, it's simple to make one of your own. Just take the lid that came from your telescope that was right in the focuser. Drill a hole in it about one eighth of an inch or so. That'll work just fine for you. Um, this is the commercial one from Orion and all I've done is taken some shiny stuff and put it on the inside to make it a little more reflective. Um, they charge $10 for that. You don't need to spend $10. You can make one of those. You can make this one. This one I made from an old film canister and uh, you can see I, I had to enlarge the hole so I could use the camera with it. That's what I used to make the video. This is probably the best device you can get. This is a it's called the Cheshire eyepiece. It's a collimation eyepiece. You can buy these. I'll leave a link uh, about $14 or so. You can buy one of those. Uh, you really don't absolutely have to have one, but if you need anything with a cheap telescope, I would say don't spend any more than this. You can also buy something like this. This is a very fancy laser collimation device. You don't want to spend this $30 or $40 or $60 for something like that. You don't need that with an inexpensive telescope. The techniques I've taught you in this video should work in about 95% of the cases. Uh, it should work almost always unless you've had serious damage or somebody's gotten in there and messed with a secondary or something. This should work for you. If it doesn't work for you, if you need more sophisticated techniques, I've got some links in the description that may be helpful. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you for watching.